Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. This is another part of our book page, using up our book page series. I apologize for the lighting. I'm actually sitting in the dark because these things are laminated and when I turn the light on, it glares so much you can't see. So the light will change. I thought I would show you the things that I made real quick um, with them. I just, of course, you know, the normal things, bookmarks, a little ch charm there. Some. Let me get my old faithful book here. This is just a page tab. Slides down and pokes up. I think I really intended it for it to be on the side. Doesn't that look cool? Have another hidden. That one's not a paper clip. That's just a... This one is a hidden paper clip. And get it on there. <laughs> I'm working in the dark, folks. So then you got your frou-frou coming up the top. And then I made, of course, a banner clip. I think that... I have too big of a paper clip for this one, but you could always, doesn't that look pretty on your page? You could always hang a, hang a charm from the side. And then one more, a page tab. You can glue it on or sew it. And I've put one of the little bee charms that we made previously on it. These, I got inspiration for these tabs from Carrie at Mixed Media. She does, has a video, uh, I think it's called Taddy, Taddy Tabs. So good to keep a, a stock of things like this that you can just add, put the finishing touches on your journal. Okay, that is all of the clips. These are, of course, bookmarks. Another bookmark. Put a little charm at the top. These two bookmarks I laminated with the self-laminating stuff from Dollar Tree. And it is sturdy. And actually these turned out better than my laminating machine. I have the worst laminating machine in the world. It leaves bubbles. It never seals right. I hate using it. Which is sad because I like the feel, the texture of lamination. The only good thing about my laminator is because it doesn't seal, you get lots of sound. But this is another bookmark. You know, with a bookmark like this, you wouldn't even have to have a anything on your spine, like a, a spine. That could be your spine dangle. I was going to show you on these the square beads that I made from the colored paper. There's another one. And this one. And I think I got one more. Yeah. But I'm going to make some more of these and probably if you're interested, leave me a comment below and I can do a tutorial on these square beads. I thought of a, I mean, they're pretty self-explanatory, I'm sure, but rather than hanging them separately, you can join them at the time you're making them and have a whole row of different sizes. I think they're really pretty, and I think they add a lot, a lot to your project. These are, of course, it's too big for my little book, but these are the writing boards. Have that hanging. Oh, I just love that. I think that's so pretty. I love these beads. Another book board. I say book board. Writing board. It's a writing board. This one was going to be a writing board too. But because my laminator is so terrible and it doesn't seal. And I couldn't decide if I liked it or not. Anyway, um, I took that colored paper that we're going to make and backed it to some packing paper and then used vintage photo 
ink to make it have that leathery look. This is another way of changing colors to the book page and I'll show you how to do this one as well. This one, when I laid down the pieces, I did it on um, contact paper. The spike, this inside is actually contact paper. So I peeled it away. Didn't have to use glue stick. You just stick your book pages down and you're ready to go. It was really easy. But this one I messed up <laughs> when I laminated it. And it actually was one that laminated pretty good. It had a string in it. Oh, and the OCD in me could not take it. I thought I could stand it. Thought I could leave it. Maybe cover it up. I couldn't. Because I knew it was there. So it had to be removed. Which meant I messed up the whole project. But anyway. There's that. And this. I actually used the whole book page. And colored them the same method I'm going to show you, one of the methods, and then I stamped it, random stamped it, Mod Podged the whole thing to packing paper, then Mod Podged over the top so it has a really pretty look to it. Actually, I'm going to get the light now. Well, that didn't help you, did it? It has a really pretty glossy look to it, but what I used this for was when I, I sold a journal and I used it like a kind of like a clutch. I put sewed the sides, wrapped it with twine, so they can use it for many things. I mean, I can pull it off and make bookmarks, all the things that I've showed you already. Um, but I thought that was beautiful, and I hate that it's glaring and that I don't know how to fix that. And I was gonna maybe with the light on show you these pretty beads. They have a gloss on them. I really like how they turned out. This one's a thinner one, but I really liked it. And with the, of course it has a paper clip in it, so you can put things on the top and on the bottom. But if you want um, a tutorial on anything that I've showed you, Please put it in the comments below. And nothing is brain surgery. It's just the way that I did it. But to show you the first method, putting color on our... There's another one that I messed up. Putting color on our book pages. Because my book that I'm using, determined to use the whole book. Of course, the pages aren't that pretty. They're not real aged or, you know, have any kind of tint to them. So to add color on my scraps, like this, I used the Distress Inks, the water-soluble ones, for these looks, for this look. On this look, I guess you could use whichever, I, actually I did use both water base and the one that doesn't activate with water. When I did the big sheet that I mailed, it took like no time because I just tore out the pages and did this process that I'm going to show you. And they, it dries fairly quickly too because this paper isn't very thick. There's some that I stamped, so we'll do it too. Um, this paper isn't very thick, so it doesn't take very long to dry. So I just took my stamp stamp pad, or well, stamp block that you put your little rubber stamps on. Use whatever colors you want. I got this one not too long ago, so I'll just, we'll just try it. And I just twist it on there. Spray a little bit of water. Doesn't have to be much. And dab, random dab. Pick another color. This is tea dyed. It's not very, not very dark. You can, these, like I said, they dry so fast, you can go right back over the same ones. Not this, I mean, you don't want to go in the same spot because we're trying to give some color and life to our paper. Do some rusty hinge. 
that is the process for the smushing, smushing of the inks. And really, you can stop right there because you've given a lot of color, a lot of texture to your pages. Um, and also what I did after I collaged them, you know, random pieces onto a sheet, I ran some of them through the embossing machine, give it a real pretty look. While these are continuing to completely dry, I'll show you. Of course, the other one doesn't really need to be shown how to do it, but I, I'll show you anyway, just for fun. There's just a small piece of scrap paper. So I just took my glue stick and run it across. Glue down your pieces, just random. They don't even have to be facing the same way. Okay, so that gives us a little section to work on. I really did like doing the contact paper because you didn't have to glue, you just stuck it down. The contact paper is pretty thin, so you'd wanna, um, if you're not gonna laminate it, use clear where you could back it to something and you wouldn't lose your pretty picture. Then I just took whatever colors that you want and I'll just stick with the ones that are close. And you can either use your ink dauber like this and don't worry if it leaves big blobs because that's you don't want it to be an even tone. You want a very uneven tone. I think that's what gives us the the better look, you know, the more random look. I also like using these brushes. So I'm just taking different colors, not worried about where I put it. And you can make it, of course, well, look at all the stuff falling. As dark as you want or light as you want, you could stop right there, but of course I'm not going to. Let's put a pop of color in this. Let's do, let's put some orange in here. Or here, the green fell, fell out. Let's use it. That's the other way, the easy way. But, well, both are easy ways to color your papers. And, you know, all the things we can make, the beads and the writing plates, writing boards and paper clips, all the fun things. If you have any suggestions or things that you would like to see, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I would like that. And here are your colored papers that... We just made that we're going to collage I will collage and make things like this out of you don't have to laminate of course and if you have a laminator like me I wouldn't would advise it I wish I didn't like the feel of it so much I like texture I think most people that do junk journals do like texture and sound so I hope you like this tutorial um, and there's all of our finished pieces that are going to be beautiful. They're going to make really pretty beads. And here are the making things like this. Those colors will look so nice, so pretty. Um, and it was just that quick and easy. But I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.